today's video, we're going to show you just how easy it is to get your new Consolidator Plus up and running for your application. First thing we're going to do is we're going to power it on. And the first thing you're going to see is that we have some pre-configured screens already cycling between each other. You'll see we have a screen for six pre-configured alarms. And the next screen you'll see is channels one through four. And these are your input channels. If you want to stop the scanning between the two, just hit the stop button. You'll see the left and right arrow keys here allow you to cycle through between the two pre-configured screens. We'll leave it on the channels one through four screen to show you that we already have four channels ready to go to accept an analog input. And we'll show you by plugging an analog input right to channel one, you'll see it's already ready to go. Now to change that to match our application, we're going to go ahead and go to the menu screen, hit setup, and go right to channel one. Here in the channel screen, you'll be able to change your channel to match your application. To do that, we're going to go ahead and hit the edit button. You'll see here, we can go ahead and name the channel. And for this, we'll use the full alphanumeric keypad and change the channel to match our application. Pressing this button again will get you a full numeric keypad. Now that we've named the channel, we can go ahead and change the function if we need to. You can do various scalings, math functions, compare, measures, controls, change the relay. For this, we're going to leave it as a linear two-point scale. You can also change the input, or the units of the input. We're going to leave it at gallons, but we also have some pre-configured units as well that can match most applications. Otherwise, you can do a fully custom unit as well. Here you can change the decimal point. Pressing the plus sign increases the decimal point number. Minus gets rid of the decimal point. We'll get rid of it for this. And here's where you actually do your two-point scaling. So at 4 milliamps, we're going to show 0 gallons. And at 20 milliamps, we're going to increase the number. To 20,000. You can also set a cutoff if needed. Here's where you would select if you want a bar graph or not. We're going to leave it on for this demonstration. And you can change the scaling of the bar graph to match your input. Once that's set, we'll hit the save button and we'll move back out to the screen. You'll see here channel 1 is now tank 1, still reading in gallons, but now reading from 0 to 20,000. And that's how you change a channel to match your application. Now that we've got our channel set up for our application, now we can go in and change our alarm set points. To do that, you go to the menu button, hit set up, and go down to alarms. We're going to change high alarm 1 for this demonstration. Here we have the high alarm 1 set for a single source and the input is the tank 1 channel that we just edited. Here you can have it sound a horn, automatic and acknowledge options, what you can do during a sensor break, and here's the set point. So we're going to change this to match our new setting. 
make the high alarm at 15,000. And we'll make the reset point for the high alarm at 10,000. And then we'll save it. Now there are two ways to view the alarms that we just set. First on the channel screen, you'll see we've added a red line at the set point. So as you'll see, channel one increase. Once that bar graph hits the set point, it'll go into an alarm. And you'll see that line has now gone down the bar graph a bit to show where the reset point is. Once we get to that reset point, the line goes away and the alarm condition is clear. The other way to show the alarm is to go to our alarm screen here and you'll see at the high alarm one, you can even see the set point and reset point as well as the relay status. Going up, you'll see we're now in alarm as alarm one is switched to on. And going back down, it's now an off because we are now clear of the alarm condition. Now that we've shown you how to edit a channel and edit an alarm, let's say we want to show both of those on their own separate screen. To do that, we're going to hit the menu button, hit the setup button, and scroll down to the screens menu. Here we're going to hit the new button. And now this is the new screen interface. First, we'll go ahead and name this screen. We'll call it Tanks. And now here is where we add all the resources for this screen that we want to show. First, we're going to show the channel we created earlier, which is tank one. And then we're going to go over to the alarm section and add that high alarm that we added. Once that's done, there are some other options for this screen customization, like the title showing the channel number, bar graphs, if you only want bar graphs, as well as auto scan and dwell time. For now, we're going to leave that all as default and hit save. Moving back out, you'll see our newly created screen with the screen title, our tank one that we created, and the high alarm. In this screen, you'll see we show the bar graph, and by manipulating the input, You'll see, just like before, the input go up, the alarm turns on, the red line shows our reset point, and going back down, you'll see the alarm go off. And that's how you create a customized screen for an input and the alarm associated with it.